from Bloomberg headquarters in New York. I'm Kaylee Lines and welcome to Bloomberg The Lineup, the program that showcases the phenomenal growth in the global sports betting industry with a special focus on the multi-billion dollar boom here in the U.S. The regular season is wrapped up for Major League Baseball and now the intensity picks up with the postseason underway. We have all the odds you need to know. Aaron Judge just ended a historic 162 game slate and now Alex Ovechkin looks to make history of his own. The NHL's all time goal mark is in sight. And show me the money. The movie Jerry Maguire made heavyweight sports agent Lee Steinberg an even bigger star. He'll join us with his thoughts on Mahomes and mega money contracts. This is Bloomberg The Lineup. I'm Kaylee Lines, and each week I am joined by Bloomberg Intelligence's Damian Sassauer, who will help us track where the money is going in sports betting. And Damian, it's hard to believe that the MLB playoffs have begun, the NHL season is upon us, and the NFL season is already a quarter of the way through. Hard to believe. Well, what's not hard to believe is the amount being wagered on U.S. sports. As we talk to our friends at the American Gaming Association, and while the official tally isn't due for a few weeks, we now expect handle growth on the order of eight to nine billion dollars in September alone. That means over $65 billion has been wagered on U.S. sports this year, roughly equal to the market cap of Fortune 500 companies like GE and Target. And of course, there is more to bet on ahead, so let's get right to it with our starting lineup, a roadmap of our main focus to kick off the show. And this week, we are all about baseball. That's right. We begin with the American League and National League pennant odds before drilling down into the historical performance of favorites and underdogs at each level of the Major League Baseball playoffs. Plus, we have to talk about Aaron Judge and his history-smashing season behind the plate. We absolutely do, and we will get to him in just a minute. Let's begin, though, with the American League Championship race, where it's no surprise to see the Houston Astros and New York Yankees odds firmly cemented at the top of the stack, as both have been there for the better part of this season. Yeah, that's right, Kel. Their American League pennant odds are cushioned by a free pass to the division series, leaving Tampa Bay and Cleveland and Seattle and Toronto as the wild card round kicks off. And while the Blue Jays have the best odds of the four, I find it notable that sportsbooks assign a higher probability of the number six Rays winning the pennant despite Tampa Bay opening as the underdog in their wild card matchup versus the number three Guardians. No doubt. But then again, Tampa Cleveland promises to be the most electric pitching matchup of the wild card round as it features the third and fourth best pitching staffs in the American League. All right, now let's shift to the National League championship race where it is clean living for the Dodgers and Braves. Yeah, last week's sweep at the hands of Atlanta has pushed the Mets back into the wild card round and with the Padres on deck, it promises to be another tight pitching duel with DeGrom and Scherzer squaring off off against Darvish and Snell. Now we both know our producer Tim would absolutely disown us if we failed to mention the Philadelphia St. Louis matchup as his Phillies won four to three and shut out the Cardinals three times. Yeah that's true but this is a different St. Louis pitching staff since the All-Star break and the cards are riding the momentum of a re-energized Albert Pujols and his impending retirement. All right so now that that table is set let's look at how the MLB favorites have historically fared during the playoffs. Yeah and as you can see favorites have done okay during the wild card round with a three percent return over the past five years but it's that 11.6 percent return on investment during the divisional round which really grabs my attention. Yeah and we'll drill down on that in just a second but can you just believe those losses during the league championship series and the world series is brutal yeah totally brutal the data suggests it is better to bet major league baseball favorites early and often before giving way to underdogs as october progresses yep that's right and while betting the wild card favorites are nice it's those divisional favorites that really move the needle for the sharps yeah no doubt as betting the division series favorite versus the money line has generated a positive return in four of the last five years with 19 and 25 percent returns respectively in each of the last two. All right, so those are solid numbers. Let's look now at how the underdogs have managed in the MLB playoffs. It's a tale of two coins here as the dogs perform miserably during the wild card and divisional rounds before turning a profit during the league championship series and world series. Yeah, and so while the smart money is more likely to think twice before betting underdogs early in the major league baseball playoffs, Things get more interesting as the lights shine brighter into October. But just how bright do they look, Kelly? Well, let's take a look here. Yeah, let's do that. Here we see the return of underdogs during both the League Championship Series and the World Series over the past five years. Yeah, and as you can see, underdogs have generated a positive return in three of the last five years. And boy, can they deliver with over 20% returns in each of those three profitable seasons. So again, the key takeaway is that while favorites historically generated a better payout in the wild card and divisional rounds, it's 
against the underdogs that deliver during the League Championship Series and World Series. Yeah, but as the championship chase begins, Cal, there's another chase that we've been monitoring quite closely. Oh, yes, there is indeed. All rise as Aaron Judge has finally done it. He made more history this week with his 62nd home run of the season, breaking Roger Maris's American League record that stood for over six decades. Yeah, and that's not all, as Judge also led the league in RBI slugging, on-base percentage walks, and wins above replacement. It has been a magical season as Judge's 391 total bases goes down as the 45th best of all time, cementing 2022 as one of the greatest single seasons by any major league hitter in baseball history. All right, still ahead, we're going to remember Tom Cruise screaming, show me the money as Jerry Maguire. You may not know the man behind his inspiration for the movie, but we got to speak with him. Super sports agent Lee Steinberg is next. This is the lineup on Bloomberg. Odds provided by Sport Radar are subject to change. Welcome back to Bloomberg The Lineup. I'm Kaylee Lines alongside Damian Sassauer. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback on our analysis of NFL spread betting over the early part of the season. Isn't that right, Kale? We certainly have. And while betting the NFL underdog early in the season has once again proven profitable, let's shift our focus to see how the NFL under has performed. Yeah, as you can see, betting the NFL under has generated an 18% return through week four as 39 of 61 games have come in below the projected point total in 2022. This results in an outstanding 61% win rate, the highest since at least 2009. But what is really going on here, Damian? Are sports books growing a little too ambitious with their NFL projections in 2022? Is this the beginning of a defensive resurgence? Well, I mean, both are valid points, certainly, Kale. But I think injuries, age, coaching changes, and of course, player movement are the most likely culprits of this year's scoring slump. Yet if you think these are strong returns, Kelly, take a look at how the unders have performed in NFL primetime. All right, let's do that. Primetime NFL games obviously are played on Thursday, Sunday, and Monday nights. And while the under has delivered in four of the last five years, this year is generated a whopping 50% return. Look, betting the NFL under has been a huge story this year as games are averaging just 44 points per contest over the first four weeks. That's a full touchdown less than 2020 and on pace for the lowest full season average since 2010. And Damien, since we're talking about making money, let's also talk about athletes cashing in. Superstar sports agent Lee Steinberg certainly knows a lot about that topic and is the man who served as the real life inspiration for Jerry Maguire. He's currently chairman of Steinberg Sports and Entertainment and is the author of new book, The Agent, My 40 Year Career of Making Deals and Changing the Game. He's indeed made many deals, securing billions of dollars over the years for more than 300 clients, including my man, Mr. Patrick Mahomes. And we had the privilege of catching up with Lee recently, and we started asking him why we're seeing such big money contracts. What happened is that in the midst of a cratered economy and the pandemic, CBS and Fox went ahead and negotiated contracts with the NFL that virtually doubled what the last contract had paid. And that was $200 million per team per season. So by the end of this, before they open their doors, NFL teams will be getting about $350 million. So they are awash in revenue coming from fantasy sports, from brand new stadia with luxury boxes, from massive TV contracts. And previous to this offseason, the privileged positions had been left tackle that uh, protects the quarterback, the quarterback always, and quarterbacks are now making what mm. baseball and basketball players are making, uh, a shutdown corner and a defensive end that could put the quarterback on its back. So those four positions, but this offseason, wide receivers broke into the stratosphere. And so we now have five privileged positions. Yeah. Well, Lee, I mean, you have to expand on that for me. This has certainly been the offseason of the wide receiver. I mean, Devontae Adams, you know, Cooper Cup, uh, Debo Samuel, um, A.J. Brown, you name it, you know. Talk to us about the front offices. How can they justify paying the wide receiver position 
at that magnitude and still be able to build a title contender? Because what teams do is they define a five or six players that are irreplaceable on a team. And what happens is it's the same income inequality that we see in the rest of the economy. So the quarterback might make 40 to $50 million, uh, Patrick Mahomes, a Deshaun Watson, a Josh Allen, the left tackle, the wide receiver, the gifted uh, sack master on the defensive line <laughs> and the backups at every position are making the minimum yeah. and so they have to decide who is modular fungible and replaceable and those players are getting the minimum mm -hmm. and then we're seeing six or seven players that are breaking out but the money's there it's a salary cap sport and so Owners are, are paying money they have that they're making. This country's obsessed with professional football. 71 of the top 100 television shows last year were NFL football. It's not only the most popular sport, it's the most popular form of televised entertainment. Yeah, I spend way more time watching TV on Sundays, probably more in aggregate than I spend on any given month in when it's not football season. You were just talking about the quarterbacks, like Pat Mahomes, who is one of your clients. 2020 signs a 10-year, $450 million deal. At the time, that made him the highest paid on an average annual basis of any player, and now he's already been upstaged by Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson. It seems like the bar just keeps getting set higher. If that's the case and they just continually ratchet it up, why sign a long-term deal? Because what happens in a cap system is that eventually, since all salary counts against the cap and bonus counts in an amortized way, a few years into one of those big contracts, the team will come to that player and try to redo the contract, reduce the salary, and extend it. So um, in a case like Mahomes, what you're telling the team is, I want to be here. This is my team. and um, But there's really not much risk that a franchise quarterback that in a quarterback-centric league is ever going to end up under salary. So, um, and a player who's making $40, $50 million, um, even though there will be players come along and sign bigger contracts is not exactly hurting. What are your thoughts about players serving as brand ambassadors, getting sponsorships from the sports books directly? I mean, you don't see many players out there advertising, I don't know, doing beer commercials or cigarette commercials. You know, what are your thoughts about them serving as brand ambassadors for sport books? I, again, don't have a big problem with it as long as it's not the players themselves um, who are betting and getting involved with uh, with gamblers. Um, we've known that people bet forever. Um, do we want kids betting large amounts of money? No, we really want to police that. But, and these are difficult questions. Uh, but at the same time, we know that this is going on. It's, look, when you hear a game that's out of hand, and there's a touchdown score, and there's tumultuous celebration in the stands. We've known for some time that's about point spread, right? And so it's never been a secret that people bet like crazy, and it's part of the reason we have a popularity of sport. As long as the athletes themselves are not involved in the wagering, um, I don't have a big problem with it. Sports betting, what this show is about, is presenting difficulties to professional leagues in that there are players who would like to invest in sports books. There are players who would like to gamble on games themselves. How do you view how sports betting is changing the game and ultimately how these leagues should be policing that? I think that that... Um, impregnable wall between betting has been breached because we now have 
teams and leagues that are buying into the draft kings of the world. You see ads for Indian casinos. Um, the one thing we can't have happen is athletes betting on their own teams and their own games in a way where they become compromised. And you have gamblers that have leverage over players. And then you have fans start to question whether or not the games are fixed. Because once that happens, if there's doubt over whether games are played on an even playing field, it becomes wrestling. And that will destroy the integrity. As to the rest of it, um, we, have, uh, we have a number of teams in Las Vegas, and that doesn't seem to be compromising integrity. And I think very soon, We'll see paramutual betting where you can go into a football stadium and bet on which team wins the coin flip and who uh, runs the ball back first and who scores the first touchdown. And again, as long as it's not players or coaches or executives doing it on their own team, I think that the sports will survive. You just cannot have fans doubting whether the games are played on even playing fields. Finally, obviously, we've talked mostly about players in the professional realm, but with name, image, and likeness and the changes in the NCAA, there is now a whole league of amateur athletes who are opened up to this world. How does the NIL change change things for college athletes and their expectations when they do <laughs> enter the professional leagues? Well, it's a revolution, and it's happened very rapidly in the course of a year. In football, it's three years until from from when someone graduates uh, from high school until they can come into the pros. So the, I'd be talking to uh, a junior and his parents. Now, all of a sudden, if you can't spot a talent as a high school junior and sign him to an NIL, and someone else does, you may never have a chance to represent them in the pros. So you're going to see branding and athletes involved in marketing themselves with marketing agents younger and younger and younger. Amazing. You're going to see it move back uh, uh, to earlier and earlier age. So, so much for the concept of amateurism and the currency in all this is going to be how many followers does someone have on Twitter and, and TikTok and Instagram and commercialization at a much younger age. And the side effect that people weren't anticipating is how this affects college recruiting, because we have collectives that are happening with alums at all sorts of colleges where they're getting together and now telling a young recruit, a 17-year-old, you come to this college or this college and you can... Uh, be guaranteed $2 million in endorsement money. Our thanks to sports agent Lee Steinberg. Now coming up, we'll take a look into the futures market with the odds for the NFL and NHL most valuable player, plus for the NBA's rookie of the year. This is the lineup on Bloomberg. Odds provided by Sport Radar are subject to change. Welcome back to Bloomberg The Lineup. I'm Damian Sassauer. It's week five of the NFL, and with one quarter of the season now behind us, here are our fantasy insights for the week. Let's start with the all-important running back position, where Nick Chubb emerged as one of just six players to score at least 15 fantasy points in each of the first four games this NFL season. He's the only running back to accomplish the feat, and with 459 rushing yards on the season, he is throwing history on its head, as this is the most by a Browns running back since the great Jim Brown in 1965. Now to quarterback, where Kyler Murray is off to a solid start despite having lost Kirk and Edmonds to free agency and DeAndre Hopkins to suspension. Murray is now averaging nearly 21 fantasy points per game, good for six best among NFL quarterbacks. 
Yet this weekend's Philly matchup looms large as the Eagles D is holding opposing quarterbacks to just 9.7 points per game. Murray is obviously one of the most dynamic players in the league, and the Cards are playing at home, but things are about to get real for the two-time Pro Bowler. Shifting to wide receiver, we are starting to see some light at the end of the Aaron Rodgers tunnel, as rookie Romeo Dubs has stepped up in recent weeks and may emerge as the reigning NFL MVP's top target in 2022. After seeing just eight targets through the first two games, Dubs has commanded a whopping 16 targets over the last two, resulting in 13 receptions for 120 receiving yards and two touchdowns. Over the first four games this season, Dubs' 19 receptions are the most ever by a Packers rookie wide receiver. It's been a wild start to the NFL season, but continued dominance of the wide receiver position is a trend that cannot be understated. To date, there have been 49 games where a wide receiver has scored at least 20 points, by far the most of any position. Cooper Cup is the only wide receiver to post three games of at least 20 points, while seven others have two games of 20 points or more. What is notable is the emergence of younger players, as not one wide receiver aged 30 years or older has logged a 20-point fantasy game this year. Wide receivers aged 30 or older have combined for just 210 fantasy points this year. That is the lowest total since 1977 and the fifth lowest of all time. And Kaylee, that is your Week 5 Fantasy Sports Update. Thanks, Damian. Now let's get a rundown of the odds you need to know in the betting futures market. And I'll start with the NFL as we take a look at the odds for this year's MVP. And yes, the top four are all quarterbacks. Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills, second in the league for passing yards so far this season, is the current favorite at plus 300 or 3 to 1 odds. Then comes Kansas City's Patrick Mahomes at 5 to 1 odds, while Baltimore's Lamar Jackson and Philadelphia's Jalen Hurts are just behind at plus 550 each. And while vets are the present, rookies are are the future and the NBA has a bevy of talented first year players. Paolo Bonchero, the Orlando Magic's newly drafted power forward out of Duke, is currently leading the chase for NBA Rookie of the Year at plus 200 or 2 to 1 odds. The Pistons, Jaden Ivey and Kings Keaton Murray are tied in second at plus 450 and Jamari Smith Jr. of the Houston Rockets rounds out the list at plus 550. And finally, we shift to the NHL's Hart Memorial Trophy awarded to the league's most valuable player. Two-time winner Connor McDavid is currently looking for his third MVP as he's favored to win at plus 260. Last year's MVP Austin Matthews is also a contender, trailing just behind McDavid at plus 460. Then comes Edmonton's second line center Leon Dreisaitl at 6-1 to one odds with the Avalanche's Nate the Great McKinnon rounding out the list. And Damian, while we're talking about NHL MVPs, one name not on the list is a hockey legend and three-time MVP himself, Alex Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals. Yeah, that's right, Kelly. Ovi is one of the greatest scorers in NHL history, surpassing Yarmir Yager for third most all-time last season. He now has 780 goals on his resume, trailing only Gordy Howe and the great one, Wayne Gretzky. And Ovi and another legend, Sidney Crosby, are turning time on its head as they both also chase the 1,500-point mark. Crosby Ovi is currently 91 points away from becoming the 15th player to reach that. Yeah, Ovi is close behind, sitting just 90 points short. The duo would join a club that includes Mark Messier, Joe Sackick, Mario Lemieux, and Phil Esposito. A lot of greats on that list. That's going to wrap it up for this week on The Lineup. Yeah, and if you missed anything on the show, you can rewatch it and all our content at our show website listed below. I'm Kaylee Lines, alongside Damian Sassauer. Have a great weekend, everyone, and good luck. This is The Lineup on Bloomberg.